رسول الله أسوة حسنة آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما If all brothers can recite with me Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala Ali Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin ma'adin al-judi wal-karami wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Nawaitu ta'alluma wa ta'alim wa ta'zadkura wa ta'zkir wa naf'a wa al-intifa'a wa al-ifadata wa al-istifada wa al-hasa ala tamassuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa dua ila al-huda wa al-dalalata ala al-khair ibtigha awajhillahi wa karamihi wa mardatihi wa qurbihi subhanahu wa ta'ala amma ba'ad assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh alhamdulillah all praises are for Allah glorious glory be to Allah Allah alone we worship and from Allah alone we seek help the all hearing the all seeing and then all knowing Peace and blessings and infinite endless salutations, salawat, salam and durood upon our noble messenger, our noble master, the first in creation and the last in sending, the greatest of all prophets, the final of all prophets, the leader of all prophets, our noble master, our noble prophet, our noble messenger, Sayyiduna wa Nabiyuna Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Peace and blessings be upon his noble pure family His Ahlul Bayt Peace and blessings be upon all of the Sahaba May Allah be pleased with all of the companions And all those who follow their path till the day of judgment Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That he allows us to follow the path Of the Anbiya, Siddiqeen, the Shuhada and the Salihin And in the hereafter He allows us to be with them insha'Allah over the past three sessions and today is number four we have been learning about the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam from various avenues Shama'il the physical beauty of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his mannerisms his etiquettes his behavior how he would eat how he would drink how he would sleep how he would walk how he would conduct himself, all these come under the Shama'il of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. But for anybody who really wants to get an introduction to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no better introduction than the introduction which Allah has given in regard to the Prophet in the Noble Quran. And that is the ayah which I read that لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ في رسول الله أسوة حسنة. that indeed in the messenger سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم you have the best of examples. every aspect of his life is the greatest for us. whenever we look at the prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم his behavior, his portrait, his teachings, everything he has touched. Or said or done Within that There is greatness And it is from the greatest of all for us And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself From the various roles he played within society And I often mention this because Often he is categorized as a religious leader And according to Other western scholars The founder of a religion Rather he was the preacher of a religion He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was not only a religious leader he was a father who also played the role as a mother in terms of the love which he gave to his own daughter and he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam he was a father-in-law he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a grandfather he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us what true friendship is he was the greatest of friends and companions he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he reformed society, so he was a society in terms, he was a social leader. In terms of institutionalizing a constitution in Medina, he is a political leader, as per se, in that sense. 
every aspect of life, everything that the Prophet said, everything that he touched, everything that he is connected with, he sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, his legacy and his character from his behavior to his looks, it is uswatun hasana. It is the best for us. We are in no need to search for any other role model in life. This is the reality. You have people who have become millionaires in a small period of time and then they have uh, podcasts and they have articles on social media and uh, journal articles released on how to become successful, what is a successful human, what is a successful individual. And what we find is that the greatest success we can have as humans is not only being referred to but implementing the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam within our lives. And this is the greatest of all things. Learning from his life, it allows us to transform and change our lives, our hearts, so that we become the best of humans. Before we can become a good Muslim, we need to become good humans. And he sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, learning about him is so important that I mention this quite often. We are living in a day and age when people have lost confidence. People have lost identity. People are no longer, and I'm not, I'm not, I am not generalizing at all, but we find that due to various other influences, the West and the liberal modern society being one of the greatest one of them, we are not proud Muslims anymore. And in a time like this, it becomes a hajatun masa ala ru'usina. It becomes a real responsibility upon our shoulders to reconnect to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we as Muslims we have confidence and the information and the true facts in regards to our noble messenger to say that we love the Prophet is very easy but to truly know him and know of his teachings the ulama who have wrote on his life whether it be the Sira literature or the Shama'i literature or the Tariq literature or even the Maghazi literature you find in conclusion they all say that however much we try to understand the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we realize that there's so much more to it a drop from the ocean cannot be taken he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam every moment of his life it can be dissected and various lessons and teachings can be taken from that so Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam by learning about his life is of first and foremost benefit to us as Muslims. But then secondly, we are living in a society where people around us have other faiths and what's on the rise predominantly we find many fellow brethren in humanity that have no faith or they are not sure in regards to the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it becomes even more necessary for us in such a situation to learn about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. When the world had no light, when the world was surrounded by darkness and ignorance and misguidance, there was a need for a light to come and revive, transform and revolutionize the society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent the best of creation, Sayyiduna Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to us. However greater the problem is, the greater the person you need. When a person goes for surgery or for an operation, if it's something minor, the junior doctors, the junior surgeons, they can deal with it. However, more complicated the situation is, that's where more expertise are required, right? The darkest age in human history, at that time when there was need, the greater the problem is, the greater the person you require at that time Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam he was sent and we see how he has illuminated everything.
If mothers have status today, it's because of Rasulullah. If our daughters have status today, respect today, hijab on their heads out of respect, modesty, honor, and dignity, it's because of Sayyiduna Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We have spoken about his beauty of his face and how light would emanate from the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Sahaba say we would think that the sun is benefiting and taking light from the face of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi Wasallam Some Sahaba say the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was like a living page from the Mus'haf of the Qur'an Some say he was the living Qur'an walking amongst the people Some say we could not directly look at the face of Rasulullah out of fear that we would become blind some say when he would smile, we could see his molar teeth and through the teeth at the front, the sanataya, we would see that rays of light would come out of the face of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam We have learned about what he ate and we have seen what a life of simplicity he lived Today some things we will learn about is the first narration is from Sayyida Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyida Siddiqa bint al-Siddiq Sayyida Tayyiba Tahira Sayyida Aisha al-Siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha wa salamullahi alayha wa ala abiha Salam be upon her and salam be upon her father She is the truthful one, the daughter of the truthful Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anha The honorable wife of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when she speaks about how the Prophet would speak You know our youngsters And when I say youngsters I'm not referring to the youngsters which are in front of me And you are all young inshallah I'm not uh, any sign of disrespect to older people you should, it's, it's the mindset We should be young at mind uh, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He would look at everything with positivity and optimism He wasn't negative and pessimistic uh, we, will, uh, we are young and we will be young inshallah The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you all know the famous uh, hadith which is uh, often mentioned within the Shama'il it comes as well that there was an old lady and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her that uh, you will, uh, old people will not enter Jannah and she began to cry and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then informed her that everyone will be young when they enter Jannah um, so the brothers and uh, sisters that are listening how we conduct ourselves is very very important how we speak is very important uh, these are some of the greatest lessons we can learn Because believe you me, you can go around You can give people a hundred copies of the Quran You yourself can do an analysis How many uh, people will actually open the Quran Very small in percentage How many will really go out of their way to study the Quran Very small in percentage You can preach to them, you can lecture them How much will that benefit? Very small in percentage But the way you conduct yourself, the way you speak to people That's what will bring people to Islam and we are all ambassadors of that. This is a responsibility for all of us. When the Prophet said, Kullukum ra'in, this is what it meant. That all of us have a mas'uliyah. We all have a responsibility. We are now living in a time where we feel as though that the responsibility is only the responsibility of the Imam, or the Alim, or the Sheikh. Uh, his job is to bring people to Islam. No. Through your actions and your conduct, people could enter Islam, and very easily it could be vice versa. Through your behavior and your conduct, people could be put off entering Islam. So it's very, very important for us to think about these things, how we speak. Smiling is a sunnah. Speaking to people with respect is a sunnah. And we will see how within the life of the Prophet ﷺ, how he was concise in his speech. He would not speak excessively. In the narration we find Makana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yasrudu Kasardikum Haza Walakinahu Kana Yetakalamu Bikalamin Bayin in Fasli Yahfuduhu Manjalasa Ilehi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, when he would speak, he would not draw out his speech as you all do. Meaning, sometimes people when they see, when they speak, they are slightly hesitant and they just want to get it all of their chest immediately. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that composure, that confidence when he would speak, he would speak clearly so that there is no misunderstandings in what he will say. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would space out his words, not speaking very quickly so that there are 
any misunderstandings or the message is misunderstood. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would speak, he would space out his words in such a way that the people who would sit with him, they would remember what he has said. What he would say, they would remember it. In one narration, we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Anas bin Malik, he narrates, radiyallahu anhu, qala, kana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yu'idu al-kalimata thalasan bituqqala'an. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would often speak, he would repeat what he would say three times. And the ulama, when they speak about this, what they mention is, if it was to do with something of great importance, everything that came from the Prophet is of great importance without a doubt. But something which was of importance, that was to be spread to others, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would say the words and he would repeat them three times. Why do you think this is? Why do you think he would repeat it three times? There are many reasons. Number one and the first and foremost reason is, so there is a clear understanding. If somebody uh, understands it the first time, to 50%, the second time it would increase, and by the third time it would be perfected. This is the most important reason to why he would say things three times. And then, Amirat Takrar, from repetition people learn. This is a form of uh, learning. Uh, he would teach the Sahaba how to repeat and they would learn from that. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, he would speak with pearls of wisdom. His words would not be long, long sentences that we don't know where the sentence begins, where the clauses are, what the conditions are, excessively difficult in terms of understanding. No. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said, Qutitu Jawami Al-Kalim, what this means, that the words were very short and concise, but the meaning was so deep that if you were to spend day and night reflecting on the words of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there would be so much meanings of the apparent and there would be so much meanings of the hidden, which only certain people can be open to understanding them. And this is also proven in the Quran when you have different types of tafsir. One of the tafsirs which we have is known by the name of tafsir Ishari. And tafsir Ishari is something that not every person uh, knew. What does this mean for your understanding? Uh, very briefly because it's not a lesson on tafsir. But tafsir Ishari means that you have the apparent meaning of what something is within the Quran. And then you have a hidden meaning which is known to the Gnostics. Uh, it's known to the people of Allah. The Arif Billah. Those people who have the true Ma'rifah of Allah. And one of them was Sayyidina Abbas. Uh, there are many verses of the Quran you have the apparent meaning and when you look at the commentary of Abdullah ibn Abbas also radiallahu anhuma arguably one of the most authentic uh, commentators of the Quran who took directly from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they had meanings that were not contravening the apparent meaning by no means you should understand that the hidden meaning is different to the apparent meaning no they do not contradict or contravene with one another but it's another meaning, an insight which is beyond our comprehension. He sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, <coughs> one of the great descriptions which we have of him is from Sayyiduna Hassan bin Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma wa alayhi wa sallam, when he asked his maternal uncle Hind bin Hala, Hind bin Abi Hala, who described the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was known amongst the companions for being one of the best uh, describers of the Prophet. He was one person who was known to know the description of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Baraka Wa Sallam. And Hassan bin Ali says, Sa'altu Khali hindabna abi halata wa kana wassafan faqultu sifli Mantiqa Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Hassan bin Ali said, I, uh, says, I said to my maternal uncle, describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam to us in regards to his speech. How he would speak amongst the people. Qala, he says, Kana Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam mutawasil al-ahzan. He was continuously in the state of worry. He sallallahu alayhi wa was continuously in the state of worry, in reflection, in contemplation, matters to do not only with the dunya but also the akhirah. 
Then he says, Da'im al fikra. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, any moment of his life will not go by except that he was always reflecting and thinking. You know, often we sit down and we think we just need to let our heads relax and go away from anything and everything. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he was always in deep thought. Then he says, Laysat laha rahatun tawil as These are two things he mentioned. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had no rest, meaning he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always tried to utilize his time in the best of ways. Then he says, Tawil as that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would remain silent for long periods of time. And this is just generally something we say that if you have something good to say, you should say it or you should remain silent. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhiri fal yaqul khayran aw liyasmu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, those who believe in Allah on the last day, if you have something good to say, you should say it. If not, keep your mouths quiet. Don't speak. This is something I think Uncle Tufail Sahib mentioned also a few days ago at the time of Taraweeh that if you cannot say words of goodness, keep your mouths closed. This is not something he said from himself, this is the Sunnah. If you cannot say words that can bring peace and satisfaction to somebody, don't say words that will bring harm to somebody either. Then it continues, and it says, لا يتكلم في غير حاجة. This is also very important. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would not speak unless there was a need for him to speak. Jazakallah. لا يتكلم في غير حاجة. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would not speak unless there was a need for him to speak. Then he says, يَفْتَتِهُ الْكَلَامَ وَيَخْتِمُهُ بِإِسْمِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would begin his speech, he would always begin with the name of Allah and he would always conclude with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why you find various ulama of Tazkiyah, they mention that whenever you begin a dua, it should begin with the praise of Allah, alhamdulillah, and it should also conclude with the hamd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why often they read, Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, wa lahamdu lillahi rabbil alameen. And that dua is not rejected. Then it's mentioned, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa yatakallamu bi jawami al-kalim. His speech was compendious, his speech was deep, his speech had meanings, uh, in-depth meanings, concise in its quantity, the words were small and short and sweet. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kalamuhu faslu. His words were distinguished. La fudula wa la taqsira. They were not too much and they were not too short. You know, sometimes when you speak to somebody for so long, uh, they start to daze off and they start to think this, this is getting boring now or to a stage where, stage where it's beyond uh, a person's uh, emotions start to kick in and they think my time is getting consumed here and wasted. That's too long. When somebody starts to waffle on, that's something different. And sometimes when you speak to somebody, if you were to quote it short, Asalaamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum How are you? I'm okay. Is everything okay? Everything's okay. When it's too short, a person can also feel the opposite, right? That I'm being ignored here and I'm not being given the uh, due diligence, respect, levels that I deserve. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the way he was perfect, his speech was also perfect, always. To such an extent, let me share with you one thing. You look at the life of all of the Sahaba, you find testimonies from various different Sahabi. If you was to ask them, who is the most beloved to Allah, they would consider themselves to be the most beloved to Allah because whenever the Prophet would speak to them, he would give them the respect and listen to them attentively. The Prophet ﷺ, every person in his presence, whether they are from the greatest Sahaba and all the Sahaba are great without a doubt, no non-Sahabi can reach them. When I say greatest Sahaba, from within the Sahaba there are ranks. And I have not determined this, no scholar has determined this, the Quran has determined this. السابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين تبعوهم بإحسان إلى آخره. Some have given twelve categories of the Sahaba. Some have given fourteen. Whatever it may be, the various categories of the Sahaba, the lowest of the Sahabi in terms of the ranks amongst the Sahaba, 
if all of the scholars, the awliya, come together, they cannot reach the rank of that lowest of lowest sahabis. And the reason for that is what? Not because of any innate quality within that person, because he has spent moments of his life in the presence of Rasulullah. And whoever has spent or has a relation with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam directly, he becomes great also. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, whenever he would speak to people, he made them feel important. He gave them attention and he listened to them. This is something very, very important that we need to take away from here. More so the ulama and more so the people who have some level of rank or status because often what happens within these circles is that people who ask questions or they come to you to speak to you uh, people brush them off and do not entertain them speak to them uh, this is a uh, direct uh, this is directly uh, against the teachings of sayyiduna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to understand the life of the prophet and act upon it inshallah La fudula wa la taqsira. It was not too long. Uh, his speech was not too much and it was not too short. Laysa bil jafi wa la al-mahin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was not demeaning when he would speak to people. Yu'adhimu al-ni'ma wa indaqad. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would honor all of the blessings even if they were small. Uh, he would always be, you know this concept of taqwa, what is taqwa? God consciousness to always be in a state and awareness of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The smallest of things or the greatest of things, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he would even in the smallest of things, he would remember Allah and he would thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. لا يذم منها شيئا غير أنه لم يكن يذم ذواكا ولا يمدهه. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even the smallest of things, he would praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. He would honor the blessings and he would never find any faults within any of them. Whenever he would eat and whenever he would drink, even if there were things that he may not have liked, he did not say that he would all never find faults within anything. Always praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, these are some of the key teachings in regards to the speech of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam. But this does not mean that the Prophet, when we say that he would remain silent and he wouldn't speak, this does not mean, uh, now I don't have appropriate words to use uh, because the English language is very uh, limited in its meaning. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would smile with the companions, he would uh, Joking is not the right word to use. He would often have conversations of laughter, soft laughter with them. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would be somebody who has taught us uh, when you are with people, make them smile. He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, you find from Jabir bin Samura radiallahu an, he says, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Kana fi saqi Rasulullahi humusha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would laugh and his laughter was that only of a smile not excessively laughing uh, showing all of the teeth and laughing with loud noises and always joking and always laughing uh, we know that the other hadith informs is that don't increase uh, laugh and joke all the time excessively joking it kills the heart um, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam uh, jabir bin samura he describes that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kuntu iza nazartu ilayhi qultu akhalu alaynayni wa laysa bi akhal when i would look at the face of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it seemed as though that there was kohan in his eyes whereas in reality there was no kohan within his eyes what this means is natural beauty pure beauty Perfection, the complete description of perfection is what Jabir bin Samura radiallahu ta'ala and he is mentioning here. In one narration we find from Abdullah ibn al-Haris ibn Jazza, he says, Ma ra'aytu ahadan aksara tabassuman min Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I did not see anybody who smiled more than the Prophet Muhammad. 
sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And this can make changes to the life of people around us without you even knowing. Those people who are more experienced, you can relate to this better because with time, uh, experience increases. Experience is not something you can buy. But in my short period of time, I, I serving as an imam, I have seen that whether you smile at somebody or you have uh, a face where a person does not feel as though he can approach you uh, or small words which you say, you have to be very careful and cautious. You do not know what's going on in the person who is in front of you in their life. People are very, facing various different challenges and words of peace, words of hope, even though they may be small, could be the changing determining factor from a life of hell to a life of goodness for that person. Smiling at someone could make a difference which is beyond your imagination. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, when we look at him, we find that in this department, there was nobody who smiled more than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam. In this translation, they have termed it as light-hearted. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was occasionally light-hearted with the other companions, which we, when we are between ourselves, uh, say that joking but even at that stage it comes within the hadith that we will find that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he was in this mood of light-heartedness with his companions he would never say anything which was uh, incorrect factually or anything which was not the truth the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sometimes we think when we are joking with one another we can make up things uh, for the sake of joking and say things which are not accurate this is against the teachings of Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam uh, this uh, example uh, has been given by uh, the Sahaba, a number of them, the old lady, the example which I gave you before, that has been mentioned, and many other things have been mentioned in regards to how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he would be with his companions. My brothers and sisters, Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, where do we begin and where do we finish when it comes to him? In terms of his knowledge, we were speaking also uh, last uh, session in regards to his knowledge and we learn how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after performing the salah he went to the pulpit and he said to the people ask me what you want to ask of me uh, I will answer you the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam he said to the people I have been shown Jannah I have been shown Jahannam uh, and then on the night of Mi'raj we learn the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when he says مَا تَرَاكَ شَيْئًا يَكُونُ فِي مَقَامِهِ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا قِيَامِ السَّاءَ إِلَّا حَدَّسَ بِهِ حَفِذَهُ مَنْ حَفِذَهُ وَنَسِيَهُ مَنْ نَسِيَهُ And a very important point which I mentioned to you uh, that the companion Abu Huraira radiallahu an he uh, gave us an insight to this when he says that حَفِذْتُ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ وِعَائِينَ That I took two containers of knowledge from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as for one of them I told the people I took two different types of knowledge from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as for one of them I informed the people about that as for the other one if I had told the people about them uh, or Khurtum, I would have been killed basically and from them uh, we find in the commentary of this hadith that various things to do prior to them happening when the Caliphate would come to an end who would come into leadership, who will be the unjust leaders, young Sibyan who will go and become the leaders, corrupt leaders, and they will call blood, cause bloodshed and violence. Uh, and then the signs of the hour as well. These were the things that were taught to uh, Abu Huraira says, I took it, but various, uh, without, without other Sahaba also benefit. A'udhu billahi min ra'si sitin wa imarati Sibyan. This is the dua that would be made by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He would say that, Oh Allah, I ask for your uh, protection from that period of time, which is Ra'si Sittin, 60 years after Hijrah, that period, and Wa Imarat Sibyan, when young children will come into power. And this dua of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, I mentioned it was accepted to such an extent that the 59th year prior to the coming of the next year, Say, uh, Janabi Abu Huraira, uh, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he left this dunya. From there we can also see 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam uh, the knowledge that was granted to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one narration of Muslim and Tirmizi we said that the Prophet salla bina Rasulullah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam al-fajra the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he led us salla bi the bi here idafa is of leading uh, ma'a is with b is to lead sallaytu bin nas not ma'an nas uh, salla bina Rasulullah Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-fajra I read Salatul Fajr with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He led us in prayer. وَالسَّعِدَ الْمِنْبَرَ فَخَتَبَنَا حَتَّى حَدْرَةِ الظُّهْرِ فَنَزَلَ فَصَلَّى سُمَّ سَعِدَ الْمِنْبَرَ فَخَتَبَنَا حَتَّى حَدْرَةِ الْعَصْرِ سُمَّ نَزَلَ فَصَلَّى سُمَّ سَعِدَ الْمِنْبَرَ فَخَتَبَنَا حَتَّى غَرَبَتِ الشَّمْسِ فَأَخْبَرَنَا بِمَا كَانَ وَبِمَا وَهُوَ كَائِنٌ قَالَ فَأَعْلَمُنَا أَحَدُنَا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam he led us in Salatul Dhuhr then he went to the pulpit and he uh, started to speak to us informing us then the same from Salatul Asr till the sun had set the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what did he do? what had taken place and what will take place till the day of resurrection the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he informed us about it all the, and then the Sahaba say the most knowledgeable here A'lam is from uh, the Ismu the Tafdeel the superlative the most learned of us uh, they were the ones who remembered it the most from amongst us the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam he is that individual that we need to verse ourselves and learn about him without a doubt we will be questioned about him in the grave it's our understanding of him and our love for him that will allow us the recognition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we are questioned in the grave muttafaqun alayh and the words of Bukhari are that inna al-abda idha wudi'a fi qabari fi qabarihi wa tawalla anhu ashabuh when a person is placed in his grave and his companions leave him wa innahu la yasma'u qar qar'ani alihim and he can hear the footsteps of them people to go atahu malakani two angels will come to him fa yuqidani they will seat him fa yaqulani they will say to him مَا كُنْتَ تَقُولُ فِي هَذَا الرَّجُلْ مَا كُنْتَ تَقُولُ فِي حَقِّ هَذَا الرَّجُلْ in the other narration what did you say about this man هَذَا الرَّجُلْ اسم الإشارة للخريب what did you say about this man يعني لمحمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فَأَمَّا الْمُؤْمِنْ as for a believer فَيَقُولُ he will say أَشْهَدُ أَنَّهُ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ a believer will say, I testify that he is the servant of Allah and the messenger of Allah. فَيُقَالُ لَهُ أُنْذُرْ إِلَى مَقْعَدِكَ مِنَ النَّارِ قَدْ أَبْدَلَكَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مَقْعَدًا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ He will be shown from the sights of Jahannam and then he will be told because of your answer, Allah has changed it for you into Jannah. فَيَرَاهُمَا جَمِيعًا وأما المنافق والكافر فيقال له ما كنت تقول في هذا الرجل وفي حق هذا الرجل فيقول لا أدري a منافق a hypocrite or a disbeliever he will say I don't know he will say I don't know who this man is and then what he will say كنت أقول ما يقول الناس فيقال لا دريت ولا تليت ويدرب بمطارك من حديد ضربة فيسيح سيحة when he will say that I don't know I don't know I used to say what the people used to say he will therefore be told thereafter you did not know and you did not try to learn about him either those people who will say we just said what people said we didn't learn about him we just made our minds up based on what people said about him and then what will happen to that person he will be hit with hammers made of iron so he will scream out of pain that those who are near him they will also hear him and apart from the human beings and the jinn his screams will be heard Allah protects us from that Allah grant us the recognition of our noble messenger when we are in our graves and that recognition will only come if we learn about the Prophet in the dunya if we connect with him in the dunya or Allah allow us to connect to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa Allah, fill our hearts with the light from the light of Sayyiduna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam On the day of judgment, it is his grand intercession that will save us In one narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said I mentioned this a lot 
and however many times you mention it is not enough. Inna nasa yasiruna yom al qiyamati jutha. That people will be groups on the day of judgment, congregations as communities. Wa kullu ummatin tattabi unabiyaha. Every nation will follow its own people, uh, its own prophet. Yaquluna ya fulan ishfa. They will say to the prophet, intercede for us. Ya fulanu ishfa. O oh, so and so intercede for us. Hatta tanta hiya shafa'atu ilan nabiyyi. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. From one prophet, <coughs> they will move on to the next prophet. They will move on to the next until they will go through all of the prophets. No one will intercede. Intercession will come to the feet of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. فَذَلِكَ يَوْمَ يَبْعَثَهُ اللَّهُ الْمَقَامَ الْمَحْمُودَ This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, send the, will raise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the praiseworthy station which we know by the name of Al-Maqam Al-Mahmud And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam he will intercede for uh, us on the day of judgment it will be said to him intercede your intercession will be accepted In a very beautiful hadith the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentions this is mentioned in Ibn Majah and Ahmad, the Muslim of Imam Ahmad, that the, Allah gave me two uh, opportunities to choose one of them. خُيِّرْتُ بَيْنَ الشَّفَاعَةِ وَبَيْنَ أَنْ يُدْخَلَ نِسْفُ أُمَّةِ الْجَنَّةَ. I was given two options. Either I select, I choose that half of my ummah it enters into Jannah, or I was given the opportunity to choose. The intercession. Do you understand the two options? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a choice to make: either you choose that half of your ummah will enter Jannah, or the Prophet was given the option to choose intercession. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, "Fakhtar tu shafaata." I chose intercession. I did not choose that half of my ummah enters into paradise. Rather, I chose the intercession. Why? لِأَنَّهَا أَعَمُّ وَأَكْفَى أَتَرَوْنَهَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ لَا وَلَكِنَّهَا لِلْمُذْنِبِينَ الْخَطَّائِينَ الْمُتَلَوِّسِينَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said I chose intercession because this will be sufficient for my whole ummah And who is intercession for? Is the intercession only for the person who is truly devout in his love and his mission? The muttaqin? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said no Intercession is not only for those people. Intercession is walakinha lil mudnibin, the sinners. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, al khatayin, those who err and make mistakes, al mutalawithin, those who are the evil doers. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did not choose for half of his ummah uh, to be forgiven, but rather he chose intercession. Because intercession is not only for the muttaqin, the muttaqin they are already guaranteed Jannah. But what does intercession do? Are you understanding? If the Prophet said half of my ummah will go to Jannah, only half would have gone, what would have happened with the other half? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa rather he chose intercession because going to Jannah for the, for the muttaqin is already guaranteed. But what happens with inter intercession is those people who are sinners, does those people who err and make mistakes and those people who do evil evil they will be granted intercession from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of judgment look how much love the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had for his ummah he knew our state and he sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he chose this for us how much love and what will love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do for us? This is a very famous hadith. I think it's been mentioned so much that every person should be aware of this. Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu he says that Anna rajulun sa'al an nabiya an a man came to the Prophet and he questioned in regards to the hour, to the day of judgment. فقال متى الساعة يا رسول الله When is the متى الساعة without يا رسول متى الساعة when is the day of judgment? When is the day of judgment? When is the hour? When will this world come to an end? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Wa mada aadatta laha." What have you prepared for the hour? The Prophet asked him a question. 
But in reality, he is asking us a question. This is a question to us. For those of you who think, you know, from time to time you have certain people who predict that in this year Kiyama will come or the world will come to an end or this year the, year, uh, the world will come to an end. The question is not when the world will come to an end. We all know that the world will come to an end. Yes? Yes or no? We all know death is a reality. Yes? We all know the day of judgment is a reality. We all know it's going to come. When is it going to come? That's not the question. The actual question is, what have you done in terms of preparation for that? This question is not that the day of judgment will come. The question is, what have you done for What have you done for it? Uh, people say, uh, when will the day of judgment come? Ask yourself this question, really. Do you really have the face to present on the day of judgment because you have lived your life and you have guarded goodness to such an extent that you will be saved on the day of judgment? Or are you fear that you will have to turn your face away from the Prophet out of shame? An embarrassment for how you have lived your life. This is the very famous couplet of Hakim al Ummah, uh, Dr. Alama Iqbal Rahimahullah, to the meaning of which is that Tu Gani Azhar Do Alam Man Fakir. The meaning of this, I'll just, time is very limited already, and I have been told our lectures drag on slightly, so I'll try to conclude. Um, what did Alama Iqbal Rahimahullah he says? Uh, he addresses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, Oh Allah, you are Gani and we are Fakir. Oh Allah, you are rich and we are poor. We have nobody to turn to. Whatever we have, it's from you, O Allah. And then he pleads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what does he say? That on the day of judgment, because of my sins and how I have lived my life, I deserve to be punished. But there is only one thing I ask of you, O Allah. That do not let my face come in front of the face of Rasulullah because out of shame and embarrassment, what will I do on that day? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from this shame and embarrassment and allow us to live our life in this dunya in such a way that when the Prophet sees us, he recognizes us as a true follower. Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. What an honor would that be for all of us, right? I don't think there would be anything greater than that, that the Prophet, he sees his ummati and he recognizes us as a devout, true follower of him. This is what should really fear you. Not that when we will wake up, what will happen, where I will be, which rank in Jannah, how many mansions I will have, which house will I be in, what pearls I will have, what diamonds I will have. No, those things are all secondary. What's most important, when the Prophet wasallam he sees us, will he be happy with us or not? Allah allow us to live a life that we deserve the recognition from the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. When is the day of judgment? What have you done for it? The Sahabi says, La shay'ah, nothing. What does, the, what does the man say? The Rajul says, La shay'ah, nothing. And in riwayati Ahmad, I have not done anything for it. I don't have a lot of salahs. I don't have a lot of fasting. What this means is that that man, he would fast but limited to the month of Ramadan. He would read Salah, but limited to the obligations. In terms of voluntary, optional, he was weak. I have not gathered much things together. Illa, except one thing he says, Anni, indeed I, uhibbu Allah wa rasulahu, I love Allah and I love his messenger. Faqal, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Anta ma'aman ahbabta, that on the day of judgment you will be with that person who you love in the dunya in one narration we find Kala Anasun listen to this carefully Anas bin Malik says that we, not, we did not become happy of Anything that was said by the Prophet as much as we became happy of these words of the Prophet that you will be with those who you love in the hereafter. Why do you think that is? Because he knew the level and the status and the amount of love the Sahaba had for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. There are multiple examples which show that love. Uh, time is coming to an end. 
one or two narrations and then we will finish. Sa'ib bin Yazid from, uh, uh, he says, Zahabat bi khalati ilal nabi. My maternal aunt took me to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqalat ya Rasulullah. And she says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, inna ibn ukhti, indeed the son of my sister, wajio. He is in pain. He is suffering. فَمَسَحَ رَأْسِي وَدَآلِي بِالْبَرَقِ These are the words مُتَّفَقُنُ عَلَيْهِ The words of Bukhari and the words of Muslim. Without any commentary, the actual words, the matan. You know in hadith you have, how many parts make a hadith? Anybody? It's not a trick question, it's very simple. How many parts make a hadith? Two parts. You have the sanad and the matan. When you say hadith, Something which is from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam There are two things which are important The Sanad, the chain of narration And the Matan Matan meaning the text itself The actual words Then everything else is additional Commentary Ila ahirihi explanation What does he say? Sa'ib bin Yazid says that My maternal aunt took me the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And she said that the son of my uh, sister is wajib Is in pain فَمَسَحَ رَأْسِي the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wiped my head وَدَعَالِي بِالْبَرَقَ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made supplicated dua for blessings on my behalf. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on behalf of that person, he made the dua of barakah. In another narration we find, Abu Juhayfa, he says, خَرَجَ عَلَيْنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet came out, Bil uh, Hajira, he came out to us in the midday heat. Fa'utiya bi wudu in fatawadda. He was given water so he could perform wudu. Fajal al nasu ya khuzuna min fadli wudu ihi fayatamassahuna bihi. The people they started to take from the leftover water of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, and they started to wipe that water on themselves. The leftover water. They started to wipe it on themselves. فَسَلَّ النَّبِيُّ أَزْزُهْرَ رَقْعَتَيْنِ وَالْأَسْرَ رَقْعَتَيْنِ وَبَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ عَنَزَتُمْ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he read uh, two raq'as of zuhr, two raq'as of asr, وَبَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ And between his hands, his hands he had a anazatun, a spear. وَقَالَ أَبُو مُوسَى دَعَ النَّبِيُّ بِقَدْهٍ فِيهِ مَاءٌ When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw that there was a queue of people, the sahaba, they queued up. What for? To wipe the leftover water on their bodies. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked for a container, a bowl that had water biqadahin fi himam. He asked for a container in which there is water. Faghasala yadayhi. What did the Prophet do? Now he has a container of water in front of him. Faghasala yadayhi. The Prophet, he washed his hands in that water. Wawajhu. Wawajhahu. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he washed his face. Do you understand what's happening here? The Prophet did water, the leftover water, the Sahaba did queue, queued up, they lined up so that they can take the leftover water and wipe it on their bodies. Clearly there was a shortage. The Prophet has seen this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he asked for a container full of water. فَغَسَلَ yadayhi, He washed his hands with it. وَوَجَحَهُ And he washed his face with it. فِيهِ وَمَجَّ فِيهِ And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he placed his blessed saliva in that water. He sallallahu alayhi wa he placed his blessed saliva in that water. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to them, meaning who is them? Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and Abu Amir al-Ash'ari. What did he say to them? Thumma qala lahuma, them two, he said to the two of them. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and Abu Amir al-Ash'ari. What did he say to them? Ishraba minhu, now drink from this water. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Drink from this water وَأَفْرِغَا عَلَىٰ وُجُوهِكُمَا And then pour this water on your face وَنُهُورِكُمَا And then wipe this water on your chest as well. This is how the Sahaba were in the presence of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam Anything which was connected to the Prophet It becomes great. Is this not what we mentioned? A container is a container Water is water, but when that water has touched the hands of Rasulullah, when that water has been used to wash the face of Rasulullah, 
and when the blessed saliva of the Prophet, which is sweeter than honey, has been placed into that, then that is no ordinary water anymore. There is light and light and light within that. And this is what the Sahaba did. This is the narration of Bukhari and Muslim. The words of Bukhari and Muslim. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that though we are not present at that time in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he illuminated and he emanated and he really gave his blessings to the Sahaba we know that those blessings have been transferred from generation to generation and this is what we call the Sanad from Rasulullah to the Sahaba from the Sahaba to the Tabi'een from the Tabi'een to the Tab'a Tabi'een and from them to the As-Salafu Salihun all the way down this light has been carried Oh Allah we ask you that you will illuminate our hearts with the light of Rasulullah Oh Allah we ask you that you illuminate our minds with the light of Rasulullah and Oh Allah we ask you that you illuminate our bodies with the light from Rasulullah and Oh Allah we ask you that you grant us the light of the Quran and Oh Allah we ask you you grant us the light of the living Quran and that is none other than Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam O oh Allah, make us true lovers of the Prophet O oh Allah, make us true in our claim that we love the Prophet O oh Allah, grant us the recognition of the Prophet O oh Allah, grant us the light of the Prophet O oh Allah, grant us the love of the Prophet O oh Allah, grant us the closeness to the Prophet O oh Allah, allow us to be followers of the Prophet in the dunya kama haqquhu and O oh Allah, allow us to wake up in the shade of the Prophet on the Day of Judgment. O oh Allah, grant us the qurb of Rasulullah. O oh Allah, grant us the intercession of Rasulullah. O oh Allah, grant us the vision of Rasulullah in the grave and the recognition of Rasulullah. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. If all brothers can once recite Surah Al-Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد لم يلد في نفسه وفي أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد لم يلد في نفسه وفي أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت تواب الرحيم اللهم أيد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم منصور الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم منصور إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم منصور إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم منصور إخواننا في غزة اللهم منصور إخواننا في سوريا اللهم منصور إخواننا في اليمن اللهم منصور إخواننا في كشمير اللهم منصور إخواننا في جميع أنحاء العالم اللهم ربنا لا تدع لنا زنبا إلا غفرته ولا هم إلا فرجته ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا دينا إلا خديت ولا أسيرا إلا فككت ولا حاجة إلا يسرت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت يا أكرم الأكرمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإسلام اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور القرآن اللهم زين أخلاقنا بالقرآن اللهم نجنا من عذاب القبر بالقرآن اللهم دخلنا الجنة بالقرآن اللهم نجنا من عذاب القبر بالقرآن يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم we make dua to you we are in the final days of the month of Ramadan O oh Allah shower your mercy and blessings and favors upon all of us O oh Allah we are sat here in the masjid we are learning about the Quran we are learning about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam O oh Allah grant us ma'rifah O oh Allah grant us recognition O oh Allah grant us closeness O oh Allah we ask you that by human nature, we have made mistakes, we have erred, we have fallen short, we have done major and minor sins. O oh Allah, forgive our major and minor sins. O oh Allah, forgive our major and minor sins. O oh Allah, forgive our intentional and unintentional sins. O oh Allah, forgive our deliberate and forgetful sins. O oh Allah, allow us to follow the path of the Quran and Sunnah. O oh Allah, allow us to study the Quran and Sunnah. Allow us to understand the Quran and Sunnah. Allow us to implement the teachings of the Qur'an and Sunnah within our lives. Allow us to spread the teachings of the Qur'an and Sunnah. O oh Allah, from our parents, those that have left this dunya, grant them a high rank in Jannah to fear those. 
our Allah, our loved ones, the whole Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that have left this world in the state of Iman, in particular those uncles, aunties and brothers and sisters who have nobody to remember them. We make dua especially for them and the whole Ummah, O oh Allah, grant them a high rank in Jannatul Firdaus. O Allah, all those who are suffering, remove the suffering. O oh Allah, in those households in which there is disunity, O oh Allah, grant unity, peace and happiness. O oh Allah, those that are searching for suitable spouses, O oh Allah, open the doors for them. O oh Allah, those that are searching for rizq halal, for your sustenance, O oh Allah, grant them your sustenance in abundance. O oh Allah, those who have no children, grant them pious children. O oh Allah, those who have children, allow us to bring them up in accordance to the Quran and Sunnah. And O oh Allah, allow our children to be the coolness to our eyes. And O oh Allah, grant our children the nur and the light of the Quran and Sunnah. And O oh Allah, make them servants of the religion. O oh Allah, we ask you that the masjid, which is uh, those brothers who are supporting and aiding this masjid through their physical means, their financial means, or through their time which they are giving to the masjid, or even those who come to pray at this masjid, O oh Allah, shower your mercy and blessings upon the whole Muslim Ummah. O oh Allah, our brothers and sisters in Palestine that are suffering, O oh Allah, remove their suffering. O oh Allah, bring peace and tranquility in the region. O oh Allah, we ask you that those that have left this world, O oh Allah, grant them a high rank in Jannah. And O oh Allah, those widows, those young children, they have no one to turn to, O oh Allah. You are the only one they can turn to. You are the only one we can turn to, O oh Allah. We are weak. We have nowhere to go. We turn to you, O oh Allah. Shower your help upon us in abundance. O oh Allah, the way you sent the Ababil wants to protect your house, O oh Allah, send the Ababil to aid our brothers and sisters in Palestine and Gaza. O oh Allah, we ask you that the month of Ramadan is here, O oh Allah, grant us all Jannah in the hereafter. And O oh Allah, grant us Iman in the dunya and in the akhirah. And O oh Allah, we ask you that when we leave this world, allow us to utter the words, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. O oh Allah, grant us all khatima bil iman. O oh Allah, grant us all khatima bil khair. And O oh Allah, allow, allow us all to purify our intentions. O oh Allah, whenever we do any act of goodness, allow it, it, allow it to be for your rida and for the rida of your beloved. O oh Allah, allow us to do everything which we do, all acts of goodness, for your sake and for the sake of your beloved. O oh Allah, we ask you that the way we do our actions, and our intentions, actions are based upon the intentions in the same way we know that actions are based upon the ending. Oh Allah, allow our final actions to be actions of goodness. Innamal a'malu bi Oh Allah, allow our final actions in the dunya to be acts of goodness. Oh Allah, the du'as which we have made that are of benefit to us, accept them and grant it to us. Oh Allah, those du'as which are of benefit to us, which we have not made, Oh Allah, you know better, you are Alim. O oh Allah, grant that to us also. O oh Allah, these brothers and sisters, the brothers who are sat in front of me, if you can all lower your heads for one minute and any du'as which you have presented to Allah, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all these brothers that are here, individually they all have du'as that they need accepting. O oh Allah, through your name, Fattah, we ask you to open the doors for all of our brothers. Jo bhi inki nek jayiz hajit hai, ya Allah, usse pura farma. O Allah, whichever du'a they have in their hearts, you are alimun bizati sudur. O Allah, accept their du'as. O Allah, accept their du'as. O Allah, accept their du'as. Allahumma rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawabur rahim wa ufawidu umurana ila Allah inna Allah basirun bil ibad subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursaleen والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين تقبل الله منا ومنكم
Assalamu alaikum. If you like to follow, I'm reading Surah Al Furqan. Surah Al Furqan. It's a page uh, 359. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا الذي له ملك السماوات بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفا 
خلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غافق إذا وقف ومن شر النفاثات في الأقب ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومن المفلحون إن رحمة الله قريب من المرمين ولكن, ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه <تصفيق> الحمد لله آج اي ار واي ديجيتال کی انتظامیہ نے حاجی عبد الرزاق مرحوم و مغفور کے اثار ثواب کے لیے افطار ڈنر کا اہتمام کیا ہے کل بھی کیا تھا آج پھر کیا ہے تو آج ان کے لیے خصوصی دعا کرنی ہے اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ ان کے درجات بلند فرمائے اور ان کی پوری فیملی جو ہے حاجی محمد اقبال سلمان اقبال یعقوب اقبال صاحب حاجی جان محمد اور حاجی عبد الروف اور پوری فیملی اور ان کا پورا سٹاف جو ہے سب کے لیے ہم دعا گو ہیں کہ اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ ان کو اس کا اجر عطا فرمائے آمین الحمد للہ رب العالمین ونعاقبۃ للمتقین والصلاة والسلام على رسوله سيد المرسلين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار يا إله العالمين آج کی اس دعا کا محفل کا ثواب اور بالخصوص اے ار وائی نے جو افطار ڈنر کا اتمام کیا اس کا ثواب حضور رحمت دو عالم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے وسیلہ جمیلہ سے حاجی عبد الرزاق مرحوم و مغفور کی روح کو پہنچا دیں یا عالمین اپنے فضل سے اپنے کرم سے مرحوم کی بخشش فرما مغفرت فرما مرحوم کے صغیرہ و کبیرہ گناہوں کو معاف فرما یا عالمین مرحوم کو جنت الفردوس میں اعلیٰ مقام عطا فرما اور مرحوم کی قبر کو جنت کے باغوں میں سے باغ بنا دے کل قیامت کے دن آقا دعالم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی شفاعت عظما نصیب فرما اور ان کی پوری فیملی کے لیے ہم دعا گو ہیں کہ اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ ان کو اس کا اجر عطا فرمائے یہ اے آر بھائی والے احساس فاؤنڈیشن والے اور بھی مختلف جگہ پہ اسی طرح کے چیریٹی کے کام کرتے ہیں تو اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ ان کو اس کا اجر عطا فرمائے ہیر مسجد کی انتظامی کے ساتھ تعاون کرتے ہیں اللہ تعالیٰ اجر عطا فرمائے یا لالمی ناج کی اس عبادت کو اپنی بارگاہ میں قبول فرما ریاضت کو قبول فرما بیان کو قبول فرما ہمارے قبل ڈاکٹر شفیع الدین صاحب نے خوبصورت بیان کیا اور امام حمزہ حسن صاحب نے خوبصورت بیان کیے اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ ان کو اس کا اجر عطا فرمائے اور ہیر و مسجد کی پوری ولنٹیئر ٹیم اور سسٹرز باقی جو خدمت کر رہے ہیں اللہ تعالیٰ قبول فرمائے اور اس مسجد کے اندر جو اتکاف میں بیٹھے ہیں اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ ان کا اتکاف قبول فرمائے اتکاف کرنے والوں کی عبادتیں قبول فرمائے ان کی دعائیں قبول فرمائے یا اللہ عالمی تو اپنے فضل سے اپنے کرم سے اپنی رحمت سے ہمارے صغیرہ کبیرہ گناہوں کو معاف فرمائے یا اللہ عالمی ہماری خطاؤں کو معاف فرما ہماری لغزشوں کو معاف فرما ہمارا خاتمہ بال خیر فرما ہمارا خاتمہ بال ایمان فرما یا اللہ عالمی ہم سب کی آخرت اچھی فرما رمضان شیف کے اندر کی جانے والی عبادات جو بھی ہم سے ہو سکی مولا کریم قبول فرما 
اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اس وقت اسلامی مالک میں پریشانی آئے بالخصوص غزہ اور فلسطین کے اندر اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ وہاں پہ امن عطا فرمائے کشمیر میں اللہ تعالیٰ مسلمانوں کی امن عطا فرمائے مسلمانوں کی جان و مال کی حفاظت فرمائے یو کے اور یورپ میں رہنے والے ہماری ہمارے نوجوان نسل نئی نسل ہماری اولادیں یا اللہ عالمین ان کی خیر فرما دیں یا اللہ عالمین جن کی بھی کوئی پریشانیاں ہیں دور فرما کوئی مشکلیں آسان فرما نیک جائد حاجتیں ہیں پوری فرما اللہم ربنا تقاتنا فی الدنیا حسنتا وفی الاخرت حسنتا وقنا عذاب النار اللہم قرصہ بھائی آجر اللہم انکا حفظ کریم تحب العفو فاف عنا یا غفور یا کریم دعا اختار کا وقت ہو گیا ہے اللہ تعالیٰ کی بارگاہ میں دعا کریں اللہ تعالیٰ ہماری گناہوں کو معاف فرمائے اللہم انی لکا سمت و بکا آمنت و علیکا توکلت و علا رزقکا افترت اللہم امین او اللہ انی لکا سمت و ای کیپٹ فور فاسٹ فار یو یا اللہ and I break fast on your risk inshallah Bismillah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد اشهد الله لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا رسول
حياة الفن سيدنا محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة الرفعة وذا سمحان المحمود التي وعدت وارزقنا شفاء يوم القيامة إنك لا تغلف النار برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمين اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى سيدنا ونبينا محمد مبارك وسلم وصلي عليه الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا بالصلاة حيا بالصلاة حيا للفلاح حيا للفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إنا أعطيناك فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الله أكبر
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر <تصفيق> الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لا إله إلا الله لا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على حبيب محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار وادخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين وصلى الله تعالى على حبيب محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمةك يا رحم الله
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على حبيب محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين فروضي قارئ علم أماري نماز کو اپنی بارگاہ میں شرف قبولیت عطا فرما جنہوں نے آج افتاری کا انتظام کیا یا اللہ پاک ان کے کاروبار میں مال و جان میں رزق میں برکتیں عطا فرما وصل اللہ تعالی على حبیب محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحمة
مثلاً پانچ منزلہ بلڈنگ میں کار پارک اور فنرل سروس کے لیے مخصوص فلور کے علاوہ ایک مکمل فلور صرف خواتین کے لیے مخصوص ہے مسجد میں تقریباً پانچ ہزار نمازیوں کی گنجائش ہے یوں عید الفطر اور عید الاضحیٰ جیسے مواقع پر یک بعد دیگرے تقریباً چھ جماعتوں میں یہ مسجد تقریباً پچیس سے تیس ہزار نمازیوں کو نماز کی ادائیگی کی سہولت مہیا کرتی ہے جس طرح ہیرو اور اس کے اطراف میں بسے مسلمانوں نے فراغ دلانا خطیر عطیات دے کر اس مسجد کی تعمیر سے اپنی دین اسلام سے بے پنہا محبت اور عقیدت کا منہ بولتا ثبوت دیا ہے اسی طرح اس کا نظم و نسق چلانے میں بزرگ خواتین و حضرات سے لے کر نوجوان لڑکے اور لڑکیوں کی بڑی تعداد ٹرسٹیز اور والنٹیئرس اپنی خدمات پیش کر کے آنے والے نمازیوں کا دل جیت لیتے ہیں دیگر اسلامی تہور کے علاوہ رمضان جیسے بابرکت اور مقدس مہینوں میں ٹرسٹیز اور والنٹیئرس دن رات کوشاں رہ کر دور دراز سے آنے والے ہزاروں نمازیوں کی خدمت کو خوش دلی سے کر کے نہ صرف ان نمازیوں کی دعائیں لیتے ہیں بلکہ اسلامی روایت کا عملی نمونہ پیش کرتے ہیں رمضان المبارک میں ہیر و جامعہ مسجد میں تمام نمازیوں کے لیے افطار اور کھانے کا اہتمام ہوتا ہے روزانہ تقریباً تین سو سے پانچ سو نمازیوں کے لیے افطار اور کھانے کا اہتمام یہاں کے لوگوں کی فراخ دلانہ ڈونیشن ٹرسٹیز اور والنٹیئر کی انتھک محنت اور روایتی مہمان نوازی کا مظہر ہے رمضان کے آخری عشرے میں تو احتکاف کا ایک شہر آباد ہو جاتا ہے اللہ کے ان مہمانوں کو دن رات سحری افطار اور دیگر ضروریات باہم پہنچانا قابل تحسین ہے مسلمانوں کی تعداد میں اضافے کے ساتھ ساتھ عرصہ دراز سے اس علاقے میں فنرل سروس کا فقدان شدت سے محسوس کیا جا رہا تھا آفرین ہے حیر و مسجد کی انتظامیہ اور یہاں کے مقامی لوگوں پر کہ انہوں نے کمیونٹی کی اتنی بڑی ضرورت کا اہتمام کرتے ہوئے مسجد میں فنڈل اور مورچری کی سروس بھی شروع کر دی مورچری اور فنڈل سروس فری اور ٹرنیشن بیس ہیں اپنے پیاروں کے بچھڑنے پر دکھ کی اس گھڑی میں لوائقین کو فنڈل اور مورچری کی مد میں کوئی مخصوص بل پے نہیں کرنا پڑتا بلکہ وہ اپنی سہولت اور گنجائش اور اپنی حسب حیثیت حسب توفیق ڈونیشن کر سکتے ہیں اس کے علاوہ ہیرو سینٹرل ماؤس میں دیگر شعبہ جات ہیں جن میں لاریب لائف ایڈلٹ ایجوکیشن یعنی تعلیم بالغا نکاح شادی چیریٹی اور دیگر اجتماعات کے لیے فیسلٹیز ہائر جس میں گراؤنڈ فلور پر بڑا ہال کچن کی فیسلٹی کے ساتھ کرایہ پر دیا جاتا ہے نور مدرسہ جہاں بچوں کو قرآن اور سنت کے علاوہ دنیاوی تعلیم دی جاتی ہے یہاں اسلامک لائبریری اور ٹیوشن سروس اسے دوسروں سے مختلف کرتی ہے مسجد کے تمام انتظامات چلانے کے لیے موجودہ قرض حسنا کے علاوہ ایک خطی رقم درکار ہوتی ہے جو آپ کی احتیاط ڈونیشن سے پوری ہوتی ہے ہیر و مسجد کو اپنے زیر تکمیل منصوبہ جات کے لیے آپ کا تعاون درکار ہے جس میں بلڈنگ ورک جس میں پرانی مسجد جو دو مکانات پر مشتمل ہے اسے فلیٹ میں کنورٹ کر کے مسجد کے مستقل ماہانہ آمدنی کا انتظام کیا جا سکے گا کیلیگرافک ورک جس میں محراب اور ممبر پر ترکی کے اشتراک سے ماربل پر دنیا کی بہترین کیلیگرافی نصب کی جائے گی ایئر کنڈیشننگ پروجیکٹ کیونکہ نوائس پالوشن کی وجہ سے مسجد کی ونڈوز ایک مخصوص وقت کے بعد نہیں کھولی جاتی نمازیوں کی کثیر تعداد کی وجہ سے ہال میں گرمی کی شدت بڑھ جاتی ہے اور نمازی خوشو و خضو کے ساتھ اپنی عبادات نہیں کر پا رہے انتظامیہ نے اس مسئلے کے حل کے لیے قرض حسنا لے کر رمضان شریف سے پہلے ہی ایئر کنڈیشننگ انسٹالیشن کمپلیٹ کرا دی اور اب نمازی سکون سے اپنی عبادات بجا لاتے ہیں لیکن اس قرض حسنا کی واپسی آپ کے ڈونیشن سے ہی ممکن ہے ڈونیشن بیسڈ فری فنرل سروس ہیرو جامعہ مسجد فنرل اور مورچری سروس چلانے کے لیے آپ کی ڈونیشن درکار ہیں میک یور مسجد ڈیٹ فری مسجد پر چڑھے تقریباً دو لاکھ سے زائد قرض حسنا کو اتارنے کے لیے آپ کا تعاون درکار ہے اللہ کے گھر کی تعمیر اور اس کو چلانے کے لیے ہمیں آپ کے تعاون درکار ہے اس صدقہ جاریہ میں اپنی اپنے مرحومین کی جانب سے دل کھول کر اتیاد دیں ہیر و مسجد آپ کی مسجد ہیر و ماسک یور مسجد جزاک اللہ خیر 
Harrow Central Mosque London is one of the biggest mosques in Europe. Constructed with a cost of approximately 8 million pounds, this spacious mosque is a symbol of Islamic heritage and the identity of Muslims living in Europe. In this five-floor mosque, a part of floor reserved for parking, mortuary, and funeral services, one particular floor is dedicated for ladies. There is a capacity of approximately 5,000 prayers in the mosque. On the holy occasion of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, in approximately six back-to-back -back jamaats, this mosque facilitated approximately 25,000 to 30,000 prayers to perform salah. By paying the great contribution to construct the mosque, the Hero and its surrounding settled Muslims proved their endless love and respect with Islam. Same way, in the order to run the system and administration, the older women and gentlemen, a large number of young pupils, girls, boys, as trustee and volunteers, produce their service and win the heart of visitors. Like the other Islamic occasions, the holy month of Ramadan, trustees and volunteers stay tuned by day and night to serve the thousands of prayers tirelessly and blessings but also offers practical patterns of Islamic tradition. In the month of Ramadan, Hera Central Mosque arrangement for iftar meal and dinner for all prayers, the arrangements of every day approximately 300 to 500 prayers meal is not only show the managers and generosity by the tirelessly hard work by trustees and volunteers also show their traditional hospitality. In the addition to increasing the number of Muslims, the lack of organized funeral service in the region was severely felt. Great to Haramos, they built mortuary and started funeral service as well. Haro Central Mosque is now offering donation-based free mortuary and funeral service. On the sad moments of loss of their loved ones, the family doesn't have to worry about the fixed bill in account of mortuary, referring to their convenience they can pay donation according to their status. Hero Central Mosque offers other services as LARAB, Life Adult Education, Education for the Adults, Facility Hire for Nika, Wedding, Charity or other events, Big Hall at Ground Floor with Kitchen Facilities is for Hire, Noor Madarsa, where kids gain the education of Quran and Sunnah as well as their school tuition. The Islamic library and tuition center make it different from the others. In the addition to the current loan on the mosque to run all arrangements of the mosque, a considerable amount is required every month. To complete the pending projects, Harrow Central Mosque need your help. Like building work fund required approximately 1 million pounds to convert the old mosque into flats. Planning permission is processed this will complete soon. We request you to donate as much as you can so that the project can complete, which will generate projected rental income approximately between 10,000 to 15,000 a month. This will assist new mosques to pay off day-to-day -day expenses, debts, and future projects. Calligraphy work, internal and external calligraphy. We require approximately 200,000 pounds to carry out calligraphy work engraved on top quality marble from Turkey. We have invested several months to find the right supplier and architect who will supply and fit the internal and external calligraphy. But in order to place the order, we need to have full funds on account. This is Khatkaya Jariya. Brothers and sisters, the moment of reward you will get in return is countless. Every time anyone reads even single words, you will get reward for it. External calligraphy will be done in Arabic and translate in English. The calligraphy around the marble and the mehrab, the calligraphy around the mehrab will come in soon. But for the remaining internal and external work, Harrow Central Mosque need funds. Please donate generously. Air conditioning work. The installation of new air conditioning system on ladies section and supplementary air condition unit on first floor. With the grace of Allah, we have completed the installation of the new AC system 
on the ladies' side. Supplementary air conditioning system has been installed on the first floor main prayer halls. This was lacking of many years and each Ramadan Taravi prayers were unbearable during hot days. Now you can enjoy your Ramadan and Taravi prayers. All would have cost us 300,000 but we managed to get it done for 75,000 pounds only. Qarze Hasna money has been used. Therefore, we urge you please donate to pay this Qarze Hasna and will get reward in this world after. CCTV project and new installations. Hera Central Mosque has over 100 CCTV cameras installed on which many now need replacing. We also need to install additional cameras to cover the areas which are missing. We also need to install two PTC cameras on each floor chamber areas so that any event on any floor can be broadcast on all other floors. We wish to install big screens on each floor so that everyone can see Imam during the prayer, especially during Juma and Ramadan. We wish to stream it live on Hero Central Mosque social media. Estimated cost is 25,000 to 30,000. Only your donation can help us to achieve goal. In the month of Ramadan, we also need your help for Iftar, the opening of fast at Hero Central Mosque. Every year, Hero Central Mosque arranges for an iftar. Approximately 300 to 500 people attend every day to open their fast every day of Ramadan. These numbers are doubled on 27 Ramadan and the last 10 days of Ramadan. So far, generous community of Harrow has been donating generously and covering the cost and we are hoping to achieve the same this year. Total cost per day to sponsor an iftar is Eight hundred pounds. Be the first one to pledge. The best deed in Ramadan is to open someone's fast. Be the first one to pledge. The best deed in Ramadan to open someone's fast. Donations for twenty seventh night of Ramadan. Hera Central Mosque has been following the tradition of completing Holy Quran on twenty seventh of Ramadan by holding ceremony of Khatmul Quran, which concludes by presenting the appreciation gifts to Hufaz and Imams, who have led the Taravi prayers as well as key members. We request you to donate generously and show your appreciation for House of Allah and His servants. There is no minimum or maximum the higher you donate, the better gifts we can present. Funeral service based on your donations. Hero Central Mosque has been providing free funeral service to its community, which purely based on your generous donations. But our service are limited to our postcode boundaries. We wish to extend these boundaries so that we can provide our service to large scale and wide area. This can only be achieved by your donations. Imagine when someone loses their loved ones and they have no money for funeral service. This is where Hero Central Mosque helps by providing completely free funeral service with your donation and funds to so please donate generously so that we can provide our service to a larger scale. Make your mosque debt free in 2018. Hero Central Mosque had Qarze Hasna of over 1 million pounds when it was built. But with your generous donations, the amount left is £221,500. Please make your masjid debt-free by donating as much as you can. Ask your friends, relatives who may be looking for a moment or cause to donate. There is no better time than Ramadan to donate. Double your reward by donating in Ramadan. We need your help to run the mosque. Haru Central Mosque, your masjid. Jazakallah. London ki Haru Central Mosque, Europe ki chand badi masajid mein se ek hai. Takriban 8 million pound ki lagat se tamir honne wali bulandu bala masjid, islami tarz e tamir aur Europe mein basar musalmanu ki shinakht hai. Takriban 5 manzira building mein car park aur funeral service ke liye maksus floor ke alawa, ek mukammil floor sirf khawateen ke liye maksus hai. مسجد میں تقریباً پانچ ہزار نمازیوں کی گنجائش ہے یوں عید الفطر اور عید الاضحیٰ جیسے مواقع پر 
یکے بعد دیگرے تقریباً چھ جماعتوں میں یہ مسجد تقریباً پچیس سے تیس ہزار نمازیوں کو نماز کی ادائیگی کی سہولت مہیا کرتی ہے جس طرح ہیرو اور اس کے اطراف میں بسے مسلمانوں نے فراغ دلانا خطیر اتیاد دے کر اس مسجد کی تعمیر سے اپنی دین اسلام سے بے پنہا محبت اور عقیدت کا منہ بولتا ثبوت دیا ہے اسی طرح اس کا نظم و نسل چلانے میں بزرگ خواتین و حضرات سے لے کر نوجوان لڑکے اور لڑکیوں کی بڑی تعداد ٹرسٹیز اور والنٹیئرس اپنی خدمات پیش کر کے آنے والے نمازیوں کا دل جیت لیتے ہیں دیگر اسلامی تہور کے علاوہ رمضان جیسے بابرکت اور مقدس مہینوں میں ٹرسٹیز اور والنٹیئرس دن رات کوشاں رہ کر دور دراز سے آنے والے ہزاروں نمازیوں کی خدمت کو خوش دلی سے کر کے نہ صرف ان نمازیوں کی دعائیں لیتے ہیں بلکہ اسلامی روایت کا عملی نمونہ پیش کرتے ہیں رمضان المبارک میں حیر و جامعہ مسجد میں تمام نمازیوں کے لیے افطار اور کھانے کا اہتمام ہوتا ہے روزانہ تقریباً تین سو سے پانچ سو نمازیوں کے لیے افطار اور کھانے کا اہتمام یہاں کے لوگوں کی فراخ دلانہ ڈونیشن ٹرسٹیز اور والنٹیئرس کی انتھک محنت اور روایتی مہمان نوازی کا مظہر ہے رمضان کے آخری عشرے میں تو احتکاف کا ایک شہر آباد ہو جاتا ہے اللہ کے ان مہمانوں کو دن رات سحری افطار اور دیگر ضروریات باہم پہنچانا قابل تحسین ہے مسلمانوں کی تعداد میں اضافے کے ساتھ ساتھ عرصہ دراز سے اس علاقے میں فنرل سروس کا فقدان شدت سے محسوس کیا جا رہا تھا آفرین حیر و مسجد کی انتظامیہ اور یہاں کے مقامی لوگوں پر کہ انہوں نے کمیونٹی کی اتنی بڑی ضرورت کا اہتمام کرتے ہوئے مسجد میں فنرل اور مورچری کی سروس بھی شروع کر دی مورچری اور فنرل سروس فری اور ٹرنیشن بیس ہیں اپنے پیاروں کے بچھڑنے پر دکھ کی اس گھڑی میں لوائقین کو فنرل اور مورچری کی مد میں کوئی مخصوص بل پے نہیں کرنا پڑتا بلکہ وہ اپنی سہولت اور گنجائش اور اپنی حسب حیثیت حسب توفیق ڈونیشن کر سکتے ہیں اس کے علاوہ ہیرو سینٹرل ماس میں دیگر شعبہ جات ہیں جن میں لاریب لائف ایڈلٹ ایجوکیشن یعنی تعلیم بالغا نکاح شادی چیریٹی اور دیگر استعمال کے لیے فیسلٹیز ہائر جس میں گراؤنڈ فلور پر بڑا ہال کچن کی فیسلٹی کے ساتھ کرائے پر دیا جاتا ہے نور مدرسہ جہاں بچوں کو قرآن اور سنت کے علاوہ دنیاوی تعلیم دی جاتی ہے یہاں اسلامک لائبریری اور ٹیوشن سروس اسے دوسروں سے مختلف کرتی ہے مسجد کے تمام انتظامات چلانے کے لیے موجودہ قرض حسنہ کے علاوہ ایک خطی رقم درکار ہوتی ہے جو آپ کی احتیاط ڈونیشن سے پوری ہوتی ہے حیر و مسجد کو اپنے زیر تکمیل منصوبہ جات کے لیے آپ کا تعاون درکار ہے جس میں بلڈنگ ورک جس میں پرانی مسجد جو دو مکانات پر مشتمل ہے اسے فلیٹ میں کنورٹ کر کے مسجد کے مستقل ماہانہ آمدنی کا انتظام کیا جا سکے گا کیلیگرافک ورک جس میں محراب اور ممبر پر ترکی کے اشتراک سے ماربل پر دنیا کی بہترین کیلیگرافی نصب کی جائے گی ایئر کنڈیشننگ پروجیکٹ کیونکہ نوائس پالوشن کی وجہ سے مسجد کی ونڈوز ایک مخصوص وقت کے بعد نہیں کھولی جاتی نمازیوں کی کثیر تعداد کی وجہ سے ہال میں گرمی کی شدت بڑھ جاتی ہے اور نمازی خوشو و خضو کے ساتھ اپنی عبادات نہیں کر پا رہے انتظامیہ نے اس مسئلے کے حل کے لیے قرض حسنہ لے کر رمضان شریف سے پہلے ہی ایئر کنڈیشننگ انسٹالیشن کمپلیٹ کرا دی اور اب نمازی سکون سے اپنی عبادات بجا لاتے ہیں لیکن اس قرض حسنہ کی واپسی آپ کے ڈونیشن سے ہی ممکن ہے ڈونیشن بیسڈ فری فنرل سروس ہیرو جامعہ مسجد فنرل اور مورچری سروس چلانے کے لیے آپ کی ڈونیشن درکار ہیں میک یور مسجد ڈیٹ فری مسجد پر چڑھے تقریباً دو لاکھ سے زائد قرض حسنہ کو اتارنے کے لیے آپ کا تعاون درکار ہے اللہ کے گھر کی تعمیر اور اس کو چلانے کے لیے ہمیں آپ کے تعاون درکار ہے اس صدقہ جاریہ میں اپنی اپنے مرومین کی جانب سے دل کھول کر اتیاد دیں ہیر و مسجد آپ کی مسجد ہیر و موسک یور مسجد جزاک اللہ لال خیر ہیرو سینٹرل ماسک لنڈن از ون آف دا بگیسٹ ماسک ان یوروپ کنسٹرکٹیڈ ود اے کاسٹ آف اپراکس ایٹ ملین پاؤنڈس دس اسپیشیز ماسک از اے سمبل آف اسلامک ہیریٹیج اینڈ دا آئیڈینٹی آف مسلمس لیونگ ان یوروپ
In this five-floor mosque, a part of floor reserved for parking, mercy, and funeral services, one particular floor is dedicated for ladies. There is a capacity of approximately 5,000 prayers in the mosque. On the holy occasion of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, in approximately six back-to-back -back jamaats, this mosque facilitates approximately 25,000 to 30,000 prayers to perform salah. By paying the great contribution to construct the mosque, the Harrow and its surrounding settled Muslims proved their endless love and respect with Islam. Same way, in the order to run the system and administration, the older women and gentlemen, a large number of young pupils, girls, boys, as trustee and volunteers produce their service and win the heart of visitors. Like the other Islamic occasions, the holy month of Ramadan, trustees and volunteers stay tuned by day and night to serve the thousands of prayers tirelessly and blessings but also offers practical patterns of Islamic tradition. In the month of Ramadan, Harrow Central Mosque arrangement for iftar meal and dinner for all prayers. The arrangements of every day approx 300 to 500 prayers meal is not only show the managers and generosity by the tirelessly hard work by trustees and volunteers also show their traditional hospitality. In the addition to increasing the number of Muslims, the lack of organized funeral service in the region was severely felt. Great to Haramos. They built mortuary and started funeral service as well. Haro Central Mosque is now offering donation based free mortuary and funeral service. On the sad moments of loss of their loved ones, the family doesn't have to worry about the fixed bill in account of mortuary. Referring to their convenience, they can pay donation according to their status. Haro Central Mosque offers other services as Lareb, Life Adult Education, Education for the Adults, Facility Hire for Nikah, Wedding, Charity or other events, Big Hall at Ground Floor with Kitchen Facilities is for Hire, Noor Madarsa, where kids gain the education of Quran and Sunnah as well as their school tuition. The Islamic Library and Tuition Center make it different from the others. In the addition to the current loan on the mosque, to run all arrangements of the mosque, a considerable amount is required every month. To complete the pending projects, Haro Central Mosque need your help. Like building work fund, required approximately 1 million pounds to convert the old mosque into flats. Planning permission is processed. This will complete soon. We request you to donate as much as you can so that the project can complete which will generate projected rental income approximately between 10,000 to 15,000 a month. This will assist new mosques to pay off day-to-day -day expenses, debts, and future projects. Calligraphy work. Internal and external calligraphy 